Hi, I'm Margaret and today I'm making the Christmas cake and the first job is to line the tin. Here's my quick and easy way to line the bottom. Just trim it to size and then it should fit beautifully. Now the butter is just to stick the paper so we don't need to be too careful about this today. Now a Christmas cake rises quite well when it's baking and just to be on the safe side I'm going to put a baking paper collar on this tin. I've got a long piece that will go right around the tin and folding it just in half and then if I roll it round it should fit, there we go. It's been a week since I soaked this fruit in rum so it's puffed up quite nicely. The smell is amazing. Now don't throw that rum away, we're going to use that later. For the cake batter we'll need the usual ingredients. Lovely soft butter and today we're using brown sugar. These early stages of making a cake are the most important. Mixing the butter and the sugar together until they're really smooth takes a little bit of time but it's well worth the effort. This is my mum's old recipe and it calls for four standard sized eggs. Now these eggs are large so I'm just going to leave out one egg yolk to start with to see how the batter comes together. I think that should be fine. Let's add that extra egg yolk. I can always add a little bit of flour later if it's not quite the right consistency. Again, this needs a really good mix until it's smooth. And in with the dry ingredients. Two types of flour, almonds for texture and flavour, and of course a little bit of salt. And there goes that mixed spice to make it really Christmassy. At this stage, it's best to fold it in by hand. You don't want to overwork the flour. And there goes that extra bit of flour I mentioned. Just to get the right texture for the batter. There, that's looking more like it. And in goes that lovely rum soaked fruit. I do wish you could smell this. The smell of the spices, the rum, the fruit. That's just Christmas in a bowl. Now it's not in the original recipe, but I like to add a few chopped walnuts. It gives the cake a nice little bit of crunch. And that's it, all ready to go in the cake tin. Now I thought this was a little bit tall, so I have folded it a little bit more and put the fold towards the outside there. That's a better height. This one cup measuring spoon works well here. Let's get all that lovely mixture in. And then with a spoon, I'm going to flatten the top. Now when it's been in the oven for an hour, I'm going to cover it loosely with foil so the top doesn't burn. Then I'm going to lower the temperature and leave it in for another hour and a half. And there it is. I'll leave it to rest and then while it's still warm, I'm going to poke a few little holes in with the skewer and this will help that fruity liquor to soak into the cake and keep it lovely and moist. I left this cake to cool overnight. Now it's ready to be wrapped up to leave to mature until it's ready for Christmas. I will be feeding it every fortnight and I'll show you how I do that in another video. To keep it from drying out, it needs to be wrapped twice. But before I do, 
I'm going to use some of the good rum to brush the top. There we go. Baking paper first. Let's scrunch that up. There we go. A bit of string on that, I think, now. One round the edge. That'll keep the baking paper together. And a firm knot, but not too tight. I think I'll need another one on that. Bottom to top. There we go. Make sure the air doesn't get in too much. And then with a bit of foil. I've had to join this one in the middle to make it a bit wider. I'll just scrunch that all together. And then it's ready for the airtight tin. Thanks for joining me today. It's always great to have you along. Have a fab week and I'll catch you soon.